Liverpool's manager Bill Shankly famously once said, football's not a matter of life or death, it's more important than that. We all understand that tongue-in-cheek meaning, but in the case of the World Cup clash between England and Argentina of 86, it's fair to say that this seemed to have a ring of truth to it. La gente sintió como... Maradona has talked about it before. He said this was revenge for the Falklands. The day was the 22nd of June 1986. The venue, the Azteca Stadium in Mexico City. But to understand the level of resentment from Argentinians to the English, you have to go all the way back to the 19th century. In 1806, the British army invaded and occupied Buenos Aires for 46 days. Driven away, they returned a year later to unsuccessfully try and take the city. 26 years later, in 1833, the British upgraded from invading a city to taking a whole island when they seized control of Las Malvinas, also known as the Falkland Islands. La rivalidad geopolítica yo creo que existió siempre, porque Argentina fue siempre la periferia y Inglaterra fue una colonia, una, una nación imperialista. Entonces la rivalidad necesariamente siempre existió, con sus picos de alta, de alta intensidad y de baja intensidad. Onto the football field, and at the 1966 World Cup, England and Argentina were drawn together in the quarter final, and another battle ensued. In a game featuring plenty of bone-crunching tackles, Argentinian captain Antonio Rotin was sent off. England won 1-0. And afterwards, Sir Alf Ramsey called the opposition animals, a headline viewed as deeply racist in Argentina. The game against Inglaterra in the Mundial of 66 is like the beginning of an English animosity to characterize the football Argentino as bestial, animal, eh, eh, tramposo etcétera, etcétera. Eh, y, a nos, y a nosotros nos, por supuesto, nos indignó mucho eso y, y ese fue como un, ele, como un elemento que condicionó también la rivalidad, ¿no? Que, que los ingleses nos dijeran animals. England has since been the team they most want to beat. Outside of football, the Falklands War in 1982 only further drove a wedge between the two countries. The British tabloid press had done some pretty ropey things in the way they reported that conflict, you know, sort of celebrating the bombing of the Belgrano. Um, and I think this, it made it a real rivalry from an Argentinian point of view. I think for them that was it. England were then the hated rival who they wanted to beat. In the conception general of how an Argentino medio typical, the characterization that he does of an English, Inglaterra was a country that nos sometió a a su imperio, determinó eh, que nuestra economía no creciera, que no hubiera industrias, que nos limitáramos a ser productores de materias primas, que en la guerra nos mandaron soldados profesionales que, que, que nos devastaron. The war stemmed from then Argentinian dictator General Leopoldo Galtieri, who couldn't find anything better to do than recover the islands. British Prime Minister Maggie Thatcher considered this an invasion of its territory and sent a naval task force that recaptured the islands. Though the two nations were never officially at war, the conflict resulted in 258 British and 655 Argentine deaths. O sea, fue una tragedia nacional. Fue una tragedia nacional. Fue una, fue una tristeza. While the conflict remained a force for unity and nationalism for some, the issue wasn't of universal importance with Argentinian writer Jorge Luis Borges famously calling the conflict Una guerra de dos calvos por un pen, a war of two bald men fighting over a comb. It all meant the World Cup quarter-final match-up in 1986 was a perfect entanglement of football and politics. But no one could predict what would happen next. The first goal, the hand of God, as it's, it's gone on to be called, it was, it's remembering it back, it's one of those things in black and white for me. I was, I was eight years old and I clearly remember being in the living room with my dad. And the first thing I remember is him saying, he's punched it. Diego Maradona single-handedly changed the course of the game and history. He's punched that into the net. I remember the shock after the replays. I can really remember Maradona running off on his own at first. Pretty much everyone in the stadium stopped at this point. The referee stopped, the linesman stopped, they're all looking at each other. Terry Butcher looks like his head's gonna fall off. Steve Hodge doesn't know what to do. There's a genuine disbelief. Shilton's now starting to you know, go as well. Maradona said since, he started to call everyone over going, if you don't come, he's gonna disallow this. Get over here, come on. You know, and he's waving them in and waving them in and waving them in. And of course, goal was given. The ref's dropped an absolute bollock, hasn't he? Let's be honest, he, it's, he's, he can see it, the, the linesman can, must be able to see it. Four minutes after the hand of God, Maradona scored again, 
If his first goal was dirty, this one was truly divine. The second goal, the impact of that. The second goal is a goal extraordinary. Que hizo olvidar al primero, digamos. El primero creció en la, en, eh, creció como un, como un mito después, pero ese día de, de lo que se hablaba era del segundo gol. Everyone's out on the park the next day, all of us trying to do that, because it's the ultimate expression of individuality on a pitch. It's absolute man against boys, and those weren't bad players. That was, you know, along with Italia 90, that's England's best, best team since 66 there, and they can't get near him. Maradona captures the idea that Argentina's win was a revenge for its defeat in the Falklands War, saying, it was as if we had beaten a country, not just a football team. Although we had said before the game that football had nothing to do with the Malvinas War, we knew they'd killed a lot of Argentine boys there, killed them like little birds, and this was revenge. It was definitely revenge. It was the, because they couldn't have revenge in a military sense, the conflict had been won. You know, it doesn't change what happened and it, and it can't change what happened, but I think the nature of it I think if you compare the nature of the British occupying a territory however many thousand miles away from home and then, you know, the bloodshed that led to compared to someone punching a ball in a net, you know, I, I know what I think's worse. Maradona, you know, he's, he's not apologetic, is he? You know, he's talked about it and he's sort of apologised to the players, but he's not apologetic about it. He, at the time, he did lie to Terry Butcher, you know that, don't you? In the dressing, they were both had to go drug testing afterwards and, and Terry Butcher said to him, hand or head? And, and Maradona said, head. And Terry Butcher said, if he'd have told me hand, I'd kick the shit out of him in the drug testing room. Argentina would win the World Cup that year, and Maradona would prove himself to be the best player in the world. Maybe the best player ever. Sí, sí, fue una gran alegría. Una gran alegría. El, el condimento Malvinas, por supuesto, le sumó nacionalismo. Y una cosa que le suma a la leyenda es la declaración de Diego. Es, fue con la mano, con la mano de Dios. O sea, eso ya metió la poesía En, en, en la cuestión futbolística le metió le metió un toque de, de alta literatura a la a la cuestión futbolística eso hizo también que creciera esa leyenda no if you needed to explain Maradona to you know let's say an alien race came down and we're trying to find out all about football or, or you know the world and you had to explain Maradona you just say watch that game you've got both sides of it haven't you you know you've got him trying to get an advantage which is a you know I know that's championed in South America that sort of um, is it Viveza it's called I think and then you've got him doing what he was the best in the world at, and, and for me, will always be the best at. You know, you look at that pitch in Mexico, it's bobbly, dry, and he's got the ball. You know, it's, it, it doesn't leave the end of his foot. It's, it, it's just, I mean, it's, it's incredible even now. Por eso también yo creo que lo de la mano de Dios prendió tanto, ¿no? Porque hay, a veces me parece que hay una mala interpretación de lo, que hizo, de lo que quiso decir Diego con la mano de Dios. No dijo, yo soy Dios y lo hice con mi mano. Dijo, Dios, si en caso de que fuera fuente de justicia y de razón, hizo un poco de justicia con el pueblo argentino que sufrió tanto y a través de su mano consoló, de alguna forma dio un consuelo, marcando este gol. There's a debate about who's the greatest and things like that, and I don't think you can compare people from different eras. You just have to say that while he was doing it, he was the best of his era. And without that match, I don't, I mean, would he, he'd still be seen as one of the greatest, but I think because of that match, he's seen as the greatest.